Hi, Tom DeBerardino here from San Antonio. Here we've got a right knee. We're going to demonstrate a radial tear we often see in a typical athlete. Let's pretend this is a 17-year-old wrestler, one where you go in, and despite the fact that he wants you to take it out, you know you've got to do a repair to save this compartment. So what are you going to do? This is what I'd call an athletic knee abuser situation. They're a wrestler. They're going to go back to wrestling. You've got to engineer a great repair one that has less tension across the sutures because it's not just a radial tear. You've got injured tissue within a centimeter of the edge more likely than not just because it tore there doesn't mean like with a cuff that the tissue right next to the tear isn't attenuated or injured as well. So we're gonna talk about something new called a medial meniscal radial tear rip stop type repair. So the rip stop is gonna be put in a new fiber stitch, a vertical suture, in each of the meniscal elements. So anteriorly from where the probe tip is from here to here to create a, a rip stop or reinforcement. And then another one in the back element from maybe up where the tip is down to here. And then we can bridge across those vertical sutures that reinforce this attenuated injured meniscus and take some of the tension off the actual tissue but gets good coaptation across the tear. So oftentimes these are subacute and there's actually a gap so this is another technique to kind of decrease the tension through your stitches in the meniscus and take up the tension with your rip stop pre-placed vertical sutures. We're going to use a flexible portal skid. It's got a thinner end and we've bent our short end of the long end. We're going to use the long end just to guide us in. And this is a way to diminish the iatrogenic injury we could create with that sharp tip device. We're going to just park it in here just to deliver the needle. So we want to get offset a little bit, not too much. That's the, this is the art of it, I guess. You could be too close to it and the rip stop's not going to work. So I'm going to come in up high, up near the menisco capsular junction. As I'm going through, I can actually, if it were a malreduced one, I could actually translate here because this is actually going out the capsule too. So it just gives you something to reinforce against, the true idea of a rip stop. So I roll back on the wagon wheel, then I roll forward until I hear a click, it's very palpable. There's the click. So the first all suture anchor, if you will, has deployed. I pull out. Making use of this curvature, so I'm aiming down on this one, getting that tip to go in. So it's a hard stop again, I'm gonna roll back. Hard stop, and then roll forward, hard stop. Pull out. So now I've got a loop and a straight suture. And you'll see they're intertwined. What you don't want to do is grab it up high. You want to grab it down low at, at the true end of the loop. See so where I've grabbed it with that meniscal probe. So now we want to tighten the tightening suture across. We're going to pull the loop and hang on to the the free end, or you can just let it go. And we pull the loop. Good. All right, so that crossbar is down, so now I've done the job with the loop. And now we tighten down this loop by pulling the straight suture, the single suture, remembering that this device really is all one suture. It's just got two deployed knots in the back. That's good. So now we'll push it and cut it. So here we see the first vertical stitch in the posterior element of this radial tear. It did two things. It reinforced it. It actually holds the meniscus if it were malreduced and displaced posteriorly. It kind of preset this posterior element against the capsule because remember these go out the capsule, these anchors, and it's all suture so it's friendly to the knee. There's no device out there. It's just the suture knot on the back side of the meniscus at the capsular junction. So we're going to be able to bridge across this and use the tension and strength of this suture repair here to reinforce this meniscus so this horizontal suture in the end doesn't rip out through the end of our injured meniscus. So now we're going to put a second one right where the probe tip is over here on the anterior element of this radial tear. Bring our device in. There's my offset from the tear. I can walk a little bit more anteriorly. Get up a little higher at the menisco capsular junction. Good tissue there.
I've got the wheel with my thumb. I'm rolling all the way back to the hard stop back, then all the way forward, hard stop again. Sometimes you hear a click. That time we heard it nice and audible. Pull that out. You don't have to come out further than you can see. Just pull it out and translate right to where you want to go for the second one. So I'm translating from front to back now. So I'm doing the same thing with this anterior element. If it were displaced anteriorly, I'm using this suture to fix it to the capsule in more of a reduced position so that our horizontal stitch actually, in the end, is just a finishing stitch. Backwards and all the way forward, hard stop. I'm gonna pull that out carefully, straight out. There's our cross suture curled up in there that you can see arthroscopically. And outside the joint again, we have a straight suture and a loop suture. I'm gonna grab it at the end. The cross stitch is now tight. So that's the loop has done its job. Now I take the long single strand and deploy and tighten it down. So we're gonna go behind this vertical stitch. That creates the real ripstop effect. I can offset it that much. That way there's no chance that this is gonna pull through. All the way back, hard stop, all the way forward, hard stop. Kind of get that view to watch that curly Q loop crossing stitch tighten down. So you can see now in this pre-made tear, obviously, we have great coaptation, but we're not stressing through our sutures. This suture, this horizontal suture, remember, we want this to heal, so whatever biologics we add into a radial tear, which most of us are talking about doing now, at least in those types of tears that are hard to heal, they're a combination of white on white, white on red, and red on red by definition. So we know the thing will heal out at the base. We want it to heal in the junction. But if we have injured tissue here and here, juxtaposed to the radial tear itself, what this ripstop has done is it's taken up the tension so that this final repair sutures reinforced with this vertical suture in the front and the back, and we're actually pulling through these handlebars, if you will, and using them to take up the tension instead of ripping through the edges of each side of the radial tear. So we've got really good tension and coaptation, and not, we're not counting on this as the strength stitch. These are the strength stitches that reinforce it, and this is just the coaptation stitch. So now that you've got it nice and you know you've got a good repair, you can do the finesse work I could put another oblique suture from up here where the tip is and cross it down here if you've got enough tissue. And the question we always fight with ourselves clinically in reality is when is enough enough? So I think what this has done for me clinically is this makes me say that I think we put more and more sutures in radial tears because we think some of them may not be as good as the others. This I know is good. I can pull on this. And it's got good, I mean, it's not pulling out. It's, it's, that's a strong stitch because it's reinforced here and here with the vertical rip stop. So less is more in a sense. We've got three anchors in, yes, but we've saved a meniscus more importantly.